Morning all. Let's have a look at a really interesting game played in 1973 between two very very strong players. Vladimir Bagrov was playing white against Edward Gufield playing black and it was in one of my favorite openings the King's Engine Defense. We see after d4 g6. Actually g6 is quite unusual to d4 usually it's knight f6 to get into the King's Engine so there's an invitation actually for a, a Piet's, uh, you know, e, e4 here. But white doesn't take that up. White plays c4, and we steer into the king's engine defense territory. So knight c3, d6, after e4, knight f6. And the and the system that uh, Vladimir Bagarov uses now is the Simish f3, which is uh, one of my old favorites. Uh, White has a logical system of development here, uh, usually at his disposal at, at minimum, to play bishop e3, uh, maybe later queen d2, bishop h6 is attacking, or just playing it positionally, just trying to use the space. Okay, so he plays actually bishop e3. Now black reacts with knight c6, and the often used plan with knight c6, well, e5 at some point, but also a6, rook b8, b5, target c4, that's another idea. So it supports various plans. White plays here knight g e2, supporting the d4 square, because otherwise e5 can be more powerful if a knight can go to d4. That can be sometimes quite dangerous. So black in this position plays rook b8, and it looks as though this b5 plan is underway. Queen d2, and we see a6. So indeed, you know, c4 is the subject of attention for black, and it's kind of discouragement for white to castle queenside. Uh, if uh, if this is uh, going to happen, this b5 counterplay, it's going to have a target as well. White doesn't castle yet. He plays actually bishop h6. So we're in for a bloodthirsty <laughs> encounter here. Okay b5 is played so both sides kind of going for each other's king one one side is going for the potential location of the king here on the queen side and now we see white playing uh, directly with h4 so immediately for example h5 knight takes rook takes would be end of game you know takes queen g5 the black king will be slaughtered black reacts with um as one idea black reacts with h5 e5 pardon me and now we see bishop takes g7, king takes g7. Okay, so the exchange of dark square bishops uh, weakens both sides' dark squares, but which side has the initiative or the pressure to sort of build on a dark square attack? Well, in this position, uh, white would seem to be able to play d5 because of the d4 square, but what about the c4 pawn? Maybe knight a5 is effective here. Actually, he doesn't play d5 in this position, he just plays h5. Okay, giving black a few more options to either take on c4 or d4. But this looks quite dangerous, taking and queen h6 as an idea. Black plays now king h8. Okay, and this defensive knight now on f6 can actually be attacked. Uh, so one benefit of white not playing d5 is that the d5 square can be used with this next move, knight d5. So undermining a bit black's king safety, it would seem. Black plays now b takes c4, so he's using that rook, activating the rook on b2. And then we see the seemingly really dangerous h takes g6, opening up that h file against the king. So white's king is not yet fixed on c1, but black is definitely fixed on h8 here. F takes g6, and we see queen h6, immediately threatening. Knight takes f6, and queen h7 mate, as well as ideas of perhaps queen takes g6 as well. But uh, I think that's the major threat, just to take on f6 and mate on h7. Black reacts now with knight h5. Okay, and things get really, really interesting here now. Does white dare castle queenside, or does he plow on with his own attack with g4? Okay, actually, white decides in this position 
that g4 looks tempting enough and so plays it now that knight is acting as the only means of defending the h file at the moment uh, and it doesn't really want to uh, move from there in this position <laughs> and in fact black is trying to uh, lock down all the access paths to his king and he does this stunningly now with uh, rook takes b2 okay so the knight is offered g takes h5 and things are locked down now on the king side with this move g5 protected by the queen so what's the queen doing on h6? What's the rook doing behind a pawn now? It looks a bit silly this configuration with no open uh, line of attack now on the h file. But g5 is attacked with um, rook g1. White has the piece, but um, okay, black is trying to shut down the excess paths. And here another shutdown type move is is played. Uh, which also spells some dangers for the white king. Black plays g4, and this immediately, also, of course, implies that queen h4 might be on the cards. So this is getting quite dangerous for the king, actually, being on e1. Okay. Uh, so we'll look in more detail at the second pass, obviously, of this very hairy position now. Hairy as in very tactical. White castles queen side here. Okay, attacking the rook. And that snaps up another pawn. Right, so how can white proceed the attack? Well, he plays actually a very interesting move, knight ef4. So he's trying to get a knight to g6, clearly. Um, unfortunately, it can be taken, and it is taken, and it's recharged by its fellow knight for knight g6 again to be available but um, black can still avoid knight g6 by taking on f4 okay so queen takes f4 and now black has a breathing moment uh, to play another move maybe directed at white's king here okay so material isn't so bad for black at all here uh, currently black has three four five six pawns so he's two pawns up white has four and okay he's the exchange down white has the two rooks and the bishop and black has the rook and knight bishop the exchange down for two pawns isn't such a bad deal usually so black plays here now the move c3 so is this pawn significant for the very very dangerous threats well yes if black's given another move knight b4 then rook a1 is threatening mate course the pawn is useful so we see the move um, bishop c4 asking the rook to move out of the way or somewhere and it does oblige it goes to a3 uh, it doesn't want to use up a check at the moment just king c2 anyway at the check so here white continues now with f takes g4 and white's king is now looking a little bit scarier perhaps than earlier in the game um, because now we have the move knight b4 which introduces uh, potentially dangerous ideas into the position uh, most notably rook a1 mate <laughs> it's, it's something to do about something to do something about immediately so king b1 is played okay and now we we get a real acceleration uh, of white's opportunities pardon me black's opportunities to get to the white king um, the queen actually seems tied down here and you can imagine something like h6 and queen f6 mating on g7 if the queen moves away too hastily also f8 is under surveillance uh, so this this is quite dangerous for the black king but what about the white king on this b-file? How to get to that b-file quite quickly? Well, this next move really does get to the white king quite quickly, it seems. Black plays. I wonder if you can guess it, actually, if I give you 10 seconds 
uh, starting from now. Okay, black to play. Black plays bishop <laughs> e6. It's actually like a clearance move to try and get potentially queen b8 for that b-file, clearing the bishop out of the way. Um, the follow-up is, is quite magical now. White does take it. Um, and you also might think, well, hold on a sec. Of, of consideration was also c2 check. So I think we're really going to have to check all this out in a certain pass. Why actually in this position, uh, c2 check wasn't played either. Um, so very very complex tactical position here. Um, but um, you know, Black's king is faced with quite a few dangers. Uh, so this move, Bishop e6, is is really focused at. White's king safety, rather than trying to win material, leaving that pawn on c3. All right, it's the bishop is actually taken here, and now um, not again uh, c2. That's not the idea. The idea is a quick b file attack. So if I give you ten seconds here, can you spot what Black plays in this position? Okay, black played knight d3. Another clearance move because now the queen is given access to b8 with check. Now the knight out of the way. The knight's attacking the queen. Also guarding c1, so c1 you just take on c1. So the queen can't, back, can't go back there. It goes forward with queen f7. So finally we get this very, very dangerous check now, queen b8 check. Uh, but queen f7 did support rook b3 which you might think is rather token because it can be taken on b3 but uh, what else White's, white looks to be in trouble here if king c2 but um, we need to check that out the immediate thing that comes to mind is check and then maybe a discovery check but we need to check out king c2 clearly in the second pass bishop b3 is played now uh, black doesn't want to get the queens off. I think that would be not so hot. So plays rook takes b3 check. Now after king c2. Okay, very interesting <laughs> position. Again, it could be quite tricky. The routine uh, rook b2, king takes d3, carnivorous king, and it could like escape, maybe, uh, potentially, or even moves like queen c4 there against queen b5 check. So it's perhaps not the best idea to play rook b2 check. Uh, black plays a very interesting move again in this position. So I wonder if you can spot it here if I give you 10 seconds starting from now. OK. <laughs> Knight b4 check. Offering the rook to the carnivorous king, okay, and that is taken. Um, possibly uh, there's not too many major options. King c1 looks looks a little bit risky for certain reasons, but uh, the king does take the rook. Okay, and so what's the point of this? Uh, White's now a rook and the exchange up. So what is the point? You wonder. Okay. The point, uh, a very interesting check now is played, which I hope you, you might be able to guess. Five seconds. Okay, knight d5 check protects the pawn. Okay, and finally the queen can come down now up to king c2. Queen b2 check. King d3, and in this position, the king is not allowed to escape. Um, 
there's a very very powerful uh, checking mo move which shows how fragile the king really is because you, you might not have thought this possibility uh, was so dangerous at all uh, that a simple check here is, is really really dangerous can you guess the check here it's the final move of the game if I give you 10 seconds starting from now okay well there's not too many important checks this is the check which finishes the game actually so the the white king is not allowed to wonder and uh, Vladimir Bagrov resigned here so let's see if king c2 well I think the idea is queen e2 but let's turn on the engine to avoid any embarrassing blunders it's actually a mate in four then so king c2 check um, now rook d2 seems pointless let's just go with king b3 check driving the king here and in here there's queen b5 coincidentally because the pawns on a6 so the queen and knight are working very well in this position it just shows that queen b5 check yeah it's a forced mate in four wow so quite a stunning um, king's engine game let's take it from black's uh, point of view I didn't want to sort of imply the game result but let's it's nice to see from the winner's perspective so we'll go in the second pass from the winner's perspective so an invitation for appears uh, okay it's uh, rejected King's engine territory Simish okay so knight c6 an interesting system rook b8 I guess it's enough to put off uh, some Simish players this game it's a, it's a good advert for black's strategy of generating counterplay on the queen side so a6 bishop h6 already this might have been a technical mistake actually maybe given this plan it seems the engine prefers actually rook d1 here well very different type of game so we get a more much more direct game here with bishop h6 b5 again technically the engine likes bishop takes and then b5 but now let's go with b5 here h4 okay and here it's this is just strange actually that potentially you might look at this thing why, why is it now 1.34 let's have a quick check what is this about taking on h6 it can't be that bad for white white has got the h file potential now it's now it's calmed down about it it's only a pawn the c4 pawn to sack here that's standard so let's not be too concerned by that let's go with the game continuation e5 bishop takes king takes h5 so we see the move king h8 which is a hair raising defensive idea really of basically um, planning to sacrifice the knight and block up things with g5 soon so knight d5 black takes on c4 here hg fg okay so the logical queen h6 there can't be too many alternatives for black here apart from knight h5 that looks to be virtually forced if rook f7 okay let's go with queen takes g6 queen g8 queen f6 apparently is a really strong move here wow queen f6 what a brilliant idea from well not idea from the engine but calculation so in this position um, this shows some dangers that uh, the Queen's going to be one back anyway and white would be uh, doing well here in this position okay so um, knight h5 very very good move okay and we see that the very direct move g4 but the engine actually thinks it's about equal after g4 so likes the idea of sacking the knight to create a roadblock on the h file white's own pawn forming part of the roadblock 
So just taking on b2, g takes, g5. Precision chess. Just closing up the attacking lines. And um, okay, engine doesn't mind the black position at all here. Piece down. Rook g1. And we see the move g4, which may be the strongest move again at this depth anyway. look, It's looking like a hot candidate, g4. What else would there be? Okay, let's have a look at rook takes f3. Unbelievably, the resource knight e f4 is, is available still in this position. So if takes queen g7 is mate. If takes with the pawn, actually then knight f6 is really dangerous. So say queen e7, queen takes g5, threatens actually mate on g8 now. And that's actually a mate in nine for black. So that kind of continuation, believe it or not, is incredibly dangerous. And if rook takes, knight takes, e takes, this is this is murky. Okay, it's about equal though the engine thinks. So that's that's interesting. But um this continuation here, g4, you could argue adds again to black's king safety. And also threatening, of course, queen h4 is a bonus. So white castles queenside here. We saw rook takes a2. Okay. And then the move knight e f4. Very dynamic, aggressive attempt to get at the black king. Okay, but two knights are eliminated after e takes. Uh, now rook takes f4 and the engine really likes black here technically so let, let's see this position uh, engine was preferring f takes g4 or d takes e5 so not particularly this concept here and um, okay so we saw e takes f4 and in this position the preferred move is bishop takes c4 so say the rook moved, f takes g4. Still, black's doing well apparently with knight a5 here, or at least okay. So in the game continuation, this looks a bit radical to play knight takes f4. So it seems fair enough to get two knights, two pesky knights for a rook. But what happened later now? So c3, bishop c4, what was all this about? Okay, moving the rook is sensible, yes, and perhaps more sensible than the check, because then king c2 and the advantage is minimal now for black. So the rook goes, the rook goes to a3. <clears throat> okay. And um, now we see this move f takes g4 and believe it or not bishop e6 is coming up as a major candidate move here from the engine. Bishop e6 <laughs> um, or knight b4. Okay, bishop e6 or knight b4, one leading to the other here both leading to each other actually. So okay maybe bishop e6 is playable here but knight b4 is played first after king b1 now we see the move bishop e6 so just the main idea is to get this queen on this b file rapidly clearance type um, tactic to get to a key uh, attacking position rapidly. So it looks as though it's absolutely crushing the evaluation here now. Okay, so bishop takes e6 is played, and it's only one move which, which keeps black the concept. You know, this marks out the concept, really, of queen b8 being so very, very powerful and celebrated here. This knight d3 move, very forcing move, gaining a key tempo by attacking the queen. Anything else is not so hot. Um, pardon me, I keep keep overlooking this little move c2 check. So 
C2 check. Let's check why this isn't so hot. King B2. So black wins an entire rook, which you might think is a good idea. Rook takes D1. So materially, well, materially, it's not so uh, bad at all for white because uh, it's now actually equal on pawns in this position and um, technically white's even better apparently you see a small advantage for white so taking that rook uh, with c2 check is is really really um, perhaps tempting you know king b1 you know take my rook white is basically saying with king b1 uh, you might think well you know what, what else uh, was there but other things are also kind of dangerous here let's just briefly check pardon me bishop d3 in this position so here um, we have this position so instead of king b1 which seems outrageous bishop d3 check bishop e6 is again strong i think just queen queen b8 is really powerful coming up i suspect anyway not here though knight b4 apparently is the most crushing queen b8 is good as well there's bishop b5 as a resource uh, but yeah this this is still all crushing so let's let's go back to the game continuation quite stunning so black didn't go for the uh, winning of the rook very interesting so here is relying on this knight d3 so this is the most accelerated imaginable way to get to b8 with check making it check as well not just clearing the bishop out of the way the knight clears out of the way to make this queen b8 check so queen f7 now we see this check so was it worth the investment okay it's actually a forced mate in 10 here believe it or not after bishop b3 rook takes b3 check king c2 this is all a forced mate <laughs> who would have thought i think other moves are just just no good here if rook b2 check white's actually going to be apparently okay queen queen c4 this is no good really white can give back uh, a rook here and not mind um this position it's fair enough for white so black has to play exceptionally accurately here so he plays knight b4 check in this position, carrying on the forced mate. <laughs> so king takes b3 was played. If king c1, okay, in this position, the move apparently is rook b1. Let's have a look at this position. Wow. In this position, again, we get this idea of protecting the pawn with this discover check, knight d5 check. And that transposes to the game kind of pattern. It's still, still is the game pattern. This idea of playing uh, for queen b5 check to get access to e2, which is devastating. So we get that pattern in the game. We might as well look at it in the game continuation. So king takes this this move knight d5. So the knight and queen are overcoming uh, black's king safety here. If king c4, queen b5. Is immediately mate so the king steps to c2 and we saw check and uh, this really devastating queen b5 check just getting access to that e2 so king c2 queen e2 check and it's all over white can only delay things so um, just to revisit check and here it doesn't matter actually if king a4 or c4 still queen b5 will be mate in, in both cases 
actually on queen pardon me on king a4 there's queen b4 mate or queen a2 mate either take the pick so in the game well queen b5 that we examined earlier is mate so a pretty stunning uh, attacking sequence from black um, basically showing you know a b file for attack against white's king how it can be accelerated <laughs> by getting your pieces out of the way uh, to make queen b8 check absolutely crushing and once that's established in fact a, a reverberation on on the b file with queen b2 queen b5 shows great effect uh, to get queen e2 in for a, a sort of kind of queen on the seventh rank is created uh, so it's a very interesting tactical concept that this game demonstrates like to try and get the queen on the seventh rank uh, would be unimaginable if we just 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 get get the full glory of this the imagination of basically losing uh, these two pieces um, well losing this piece and let's see again so check here okay getting this position and then losing the rook here as well in this position as well just to end up with queen and knight but the queen coming to e2 is is staggering imagination but it you could argue it's it's a long forcing sequence of a set of very powerful forcing moves here uh to get this this sequence here so where you 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 have to sort of see this idea of queen b2 and then queen b5 to get the opportunity for queen e2 for a queen on the seventh rank at e2 rather than just b2 so amazing amazing tactical uh, vision okay comments or questions on youtube thanks very much